Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by Living Waters Abide Ministries. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Join us every weekday at this time to discuss news, spend time in the Word, and receive answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, good morning, Kathy. Uh, here we are um, uh, in, uh, I think this is Monday, uh, August the 19th, I believe, that we're airing, and we're doing our primer uh, on abiding. And what we're trying to do here is actually ex- uh, walk through um, how you would uh, interact with God through the Word, mm-hmm. through your journaling, and it's about hearing His voice and taking the truth that he's laying uh, in front of you to apply it personally. Mm-hmm. Abiding, see, is ultimately uh, what we call rhema. Uh, logos is the word of God. It's all true, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, and we don't counteract that truth. Right. Uh, and we talked about, uh, particularly when we went through uh, uh, 1 Corinthians uh, uh, 2, that... Um, we don't consider anything we look at in Scripture as foolishness, even though it seems foolish. Right. Uh, so that, oh, well, boy, I don't know about that. Uh, or that seems contradictory to other things I've read, or I've never experienced that. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was, um, and I think I shared this, when I was mm-hmm. learning healing, uh, God's supernatural healing, um, in essence, all the years, um, all the all the years, even after seminary, um, I really considered anything that was spoken about healing as foolishness. Right. Um, and the reason is, I said, it doesn't seem true to me. I don't see it work. And by right. the way, the ones that claim it work, right? I can see as phony baloney. Right. There was a lot of abuse out there in uh, that, right? And so yeah. when I considered it foolishness, and I didn't purposely say that's foolishness, but here's what I did say. I just skipped it. Mm-hmm. Like, mm. eh, I'm not going to spend any time on this. And, right. uh, and why bother? It's not really that true. Um, and I, I, I just skipped any time that, and I read the scriptures all the time. Uh, mm-hmm. And I would come across verses about the healing. Eh, yeah, yeah, whatever. Um, and I just skipped it because why? Well, my heart considered it foolishness. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when God, when I learned to abide in the vine, um, it brought with it uh, what's called the fear of God. Mm-hmm. And, and the fear of God is awe of God. And, and he showed me really quickly, his son, Everything that I've written is true. Mm-hmm. Um, I want you to experience this. Right. Uh, I know you don't uh, believe it at the moment. Would you spend time with me and let me show you this? Mm-hmm. And, and let the logos that you have in, up to now considered foolish become true and, and rhema to you where you actually experience it. Right. Um, and I and I because at that point I had learned what abiding was all about. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was taking logos and personalizing it for me because it had to work in my life. Mm-hmm. If it doesn't, the whole thing is kind of meaningless. Um, right. So I had to be in a position where, well, then if it's true, it can't be true in a broad sense. It has to be true in my re- in my reality. Mm-hmm. around my life. And he said, yeah, I'm going to show you this, what, what healing looks like for you. Um, and I abided in it. So what we're trying to do is help you uh, take things because people tend to leave their abiding at what I call the generic, mm-hmm. the generic mm-hmm. or the mm-hmm. theological is, uh, and I have people who are you know working on it and they'll, and I say, okay, write out the verse and what does it mean? Mm-hmm. And they write, a theological answer. Right. 
or a historical perspective or yeah, you know, yeah. but anything that is a bird's eye view rather than a heart view. Exactly. Right? Yeah, exactly. And I say, okay, well, what does that mean to you? Well, he said, well, what do you mean by that? I said, well, how does that apply to your situation? Mm -hmm. What do you, what do you mean by that is, well, now start taking that into your life and start writing about it, start journaling about it, listening about it. Ultimately, God uh, demonstrate through the word that it's true for you and you'll experience it because he's at work. And, 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 and really when you look at it that way, uh, understand this is the word true. Yes. Mm -hmm. In order for me to live it out, God himself has to act Right. In my life to make that word true, it's not something I learn about, but rather it's him making that so because he'll be working it. Right. Uh, and even as we read that, I think about the fact, um, you know, we, we can be we can make everything all about us. But the reality of what you're saying there isn't it's all about you. It is that it's all about God and God is the same yesterday, today and forever. And so as we learn his character, we learn to interact with his character on the very same basis. He is a faithful God today, just as he was years ago. And that is where this, as the Holy Spirit prompts, this comes through because God never changes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and as he said to his disciples that he walked with for three years is my words are spirit and life. The flesh counts for yes. nothing. Hey, boys, stay with me mm -hmm. and you'll experience in your soul, the transformation you'll experience in your soul that I can change circumstances to yes. solve your issues and I can do things. And then you'll start to recognize all of it is true mm -hmm. in reality for, and, yeah. and it'll be real for you, uh, which they did. Uh, so what we did is we went through, uh, scriptures to remind us that, uh, it's a process of letting God work those spiritual words into our soul and into our circumstances. Uh, and we said, okay, let's do an example that will help illustrate it. So we took the example of how do we handle people who have come against us, disagree with us, uh, are opposing us, and have maybe hurt us through injustice uh, mm -hmm. because they're self-centered. They don't even care. Um, uh, if you said to somebody who's hurt me, do you realize you hurt me? The answer would be, no, I don't even care about that. Mm -hmm. uh, who cares? You know, and if that's your problem, uh, in essence, it is because <laughs> uh, they're not going to change. So we have to look at um, how do we handle that versus living in the burden of that? Mm. Uh, well, let's okay. le let's learn to abide. Uh, OK, so we went through. Uh, uh, we said uh, we had the issue, and so Ephesians 4, and read just verses uh, 25 through uh, 27. This is a reminder of what we've already done. Sure. Uh, Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Yeah. Uh, so the key is I have to start processing the truth, which we remember we read uh, before this, uh, God will guide us out of Psalm 25, 4 and 6. He will mm -hmm. guide us into all truth. Uh, 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 John 16, 13 and 15, the Holy Spirit who's resident within us will guide us into truth. Mm -hmm. So the focus as we begin this abiding is on the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, and I got I to gotta speak it. I got to write it. I got to start with there and then start to process it. Uh, the truth. Uh, okay, so let's go to Psalm 33 now uh, and read, I think it's 4 to 6 and then it's 10, 10 11. Sure. Um, For the word of the Lord is right and all his work is done in truth. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of goodness, the goodness of the Lord. Um, by the word, the Lord of the heavens were, blah. by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. And then 10 and 11 Yep. is the Lord brings the counsel of nations to nothing. He makes the plans of the people no effect. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. Okay, so um, as we process this is that uh, God loves justice. He's mm -hmm. going to stand on justice. Um, the goodness of the Lord is to uh, fulfill justice. 
And um, he said that the plans of those opposing you are going to come to nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, don't worry. Um, I'm going to get you through this because I'm going to resolve it based on justice, by the way. Uh, and so right. you're, he said your thoughts about justice is right. And that's why it says in Ephesians, be angry and do not sin. Mm-hmm. So anger itself isn't sin. Well, what are you angry about? Injustice. Mm-hmm. Uh, God said that's good. I right. want. I need and you to be. We're angry that. about injustice because we're made in His image, right. and He is a just God, right? Mm-hmm. And He says, actually, I need you to stand with me because um, I will not allow injustice to to uh, remain. Uh, mm-hmm. So it's good. Okay. So last time uh, we said, based upon that is, uh, and now you're in these words and you're starting to realize, okay, it's based on the truth. I'm supposed to, it's okay to be angry and not sin. It's based on injustice. So what you do is you don't just leave it at, well, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Uh, You now have to go personal. Right. So what you do is you list all of the names down that you are angry about. And by the way, it's good that you're angry about it. Uh, Mm -hmm. and see your heart, interesting enough, you can say you're not going to be angry, but your heart won't let you see Mm -hmm. because why it's crossed the line of justice. And so it's, you'll feel the turmoil, right? It's an essence of the nature of God and you can't Mm -hmm. get around it and we can stuff it, which is really what happens. And we say, well, Mm -hmm. the church tells me I'm supposed to put up with this. Um, I should just tolerate it. Um, and therefore I will not be angry. You say that intellectually, mm-hmm. but your heart is still angry, uh, right? Uh, because it's true. See, uh, and the reality in that moment. Can I just insert when we do the stuffing of that? That is also when it tends to fester, yeah, <laughs> and and becomes unforgiveness. Which then y'all talk about anger leading to sin. Then it is sin, right? Yeah. And by the way, <laughs> and, so, and by the way, what does that lead to? And he talks about this in scripture. Leads to bitterness. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is, and you kind of know it because, uh, the very mention of that person or the sight of that person causes that emotion to rise up. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be around them. Um, I'd like them to fail. Um, how come they get away with it? And, and I'm the one suffering, um, right. and you develop a bitterness, which by the way, uh, think of a couple, you know, why do Christian mm-hmm. couples wind up in divorce? It's really this, uh, it's that, um, I can, I can maybe, uh, and, and usually a couple in a couple, one of the pre- people cave, what I call caves mm-hmm. or stuff said, okay, I'll, whatever you want, I'll do whatever I want to do underneath it all. You're building up this bitterness and ultimately mm-hmm. there becomes a breaking point. You know what? I've had it. Um, right. I'm, I'm out. Uh, it's better for me to be alone than to be with you because I'm so bitter toward it. And that's why couples that are married, you know, 10 years, 15 years, 25 years, all of a sudden can just say we're, we're getting a divorce mm-hmm. uh, because of that. They've never processed resolution, you know, to, to the issue. Uh, so what you do, and we had you do this last time, uh, you write down um, every person and it's okay how many there are. And it's okay. And God said, it's okay that you're angry. That's okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, what did they do? Then you're right next to them. What did they do to harm you? What did they do to cause injustice? What happened here mm-hmm. that you're rightly angry at them? So who is it and what happened? And some of that even may take some time because you may remember one thing and I would challenge you to ask God to show you the rest of it because sometimes there are, you know, we think we're angry about this particular thing. And if we trace it back, it is a pattern that we have seen and it goes much further back than what we realize. And we need to actually get to full healing on it. Yeah, yeah that's right. Um, and uh, it could start with the most recent, but that could be uh, based upon deeper things that happened before that, uh, mm-hmm. that like you say, it, and let it go where it's going to go. Um, God isn't going to take you back and have to process and relive all that. It's rather just to get it on the table. What's the truth? Right. What's the right. truth? What what happened here that I am rightly angry? Okay, so uh, we've done it based on the injustice, and we and we've written down truth, uh, and we are angry about it. That's good. Okay, the question is, uh, what do we do now? Uh, well, let's go to Romans twelve uh, nine to twenty, 
and he's going to tell us uh, an important element of that. Now, by the way, this is this is the beauty of Scripture, is <laughs> every situation we got, God God says I've I've actually written about this. Mm -hmm. uh, now I know you you can say fine, it has to become real to you, but at least you can start with what I've already said about this, mm -hmm. uh, and let's go there. Now let me let me say this: um, one question that comes up. Well, I don't know the Bible like you do. Um, how do I even know where to go? Right. Um, okay. Um, well. Uh, you can get there by God leading you there. And like, for example, here, you could say, um, since God doesn't like justice, well, what does he have to say about this? Mm -hmm. And I can look at verses and start to process that. Um, you could uh, uh, ask your pastor. You could ask your inner circle. You could ask us. Uh, mm -hmm. Email us and say, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with this issue. Um, you know, where do I start? One of the things that happens with you and me and discipling, I get a lot of calls, a lot of emails. Where do I go? Where do I go? I got an right. issue. Where do I go? And, mm -hmm. uh, well, we've, we've processed this already, by the way, as you process it, you'll have it in your library. Mm -hmm. And guess what? There'll be people that God will have you interface with. Right. And they'll because have, they'll say, how do I handle this, this, uh, person that's hurt me? Oh, I worked all the way through this, and I have a library. Now I can show you where to go, and that's and that's mm -hmm. how it works. It goes person to person to person. But you could ask us. Uh, we have courses, by the way, uh, on let's say uh, life and forgiveness, which goes mm -hmm. into pretty good depth about this, uh, or the grand life or the covenant. Um, we go into we go into this, so you can go to our courses and you can see. Okay, where do they tell us to go? But basically, don't stop because I don't know where to go. Right. Uh, well, then go search somebody to help you get get to verses that will help you. Well, in this case, uh, since we've worked through this, uh, Romans uh, 12, 9 to 20. So go ahead and read that, and then we'll process it. Sure. It says, Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor, giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink, for in doing so, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Yeah. Uh, now, by the way, when you uh, get into Scripture... Uh, be careful that you don't pull just a couple things out of it that you, you process the whole thing. Mm. So like, for example, it That's says, <laughs> it says uh, if your enemy, you know, is, is uh, in trouble, help him out. So if you just pulled that out, you would say, well, I guess, yeah, they're my enemy, but I'm just supposed to make sure that everything works well for them. Um, and that's what I'll do. Uh, well, no. Uh, it's the whole verse. Okay, so mm -hmm. uh, uh, as you're working through this, uh, everybody, number one, take what Kathy read, Romans 12, 9 to 20, write out the entire verse. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And uh, there's a critical piece to write it out longhand. So don't just read it. Don't just copy it from one computer to another or computer section to another. Uh Write the whole thing mm -hmm. longhand. So my, my journal is, is full of paragraphs mm -hmm. that I first wrote out longhand. Right. Uh, because here's what happens. Um, uh, and there's the actually studies that to support this. Uh, is 
uh, when you write it out longhand, your mind pays attention to the words mm -hmm. and you notice things. Uh, by the and way, it forces you to slow down too, right? It does. It does. <laughs> now, remember, and we talked about this who is resident within you? The Holy Spirit. Who wrote the book? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it would be like if um, I wanted to learn more about the Christmas Carol, mm -hmm. and uh, have the book. I could I could read it, uh, yeah yeah yeah. Or um, I could have Charles Dickens right in front of me, mm -hmm. and um, I could write out what is on the page and then talk to him. Mm -hmm. Is what what did this mean? What is this? How does this apply? And that's the beauty that we've got, see, is yes. the author is resident within us. And as you're writing, it's called a quickening of the spirit. It's, it's highlighting, oh, wait a minute. Uh, that's interesting. Um, and, mm -hmm. we'll, and we'll talk about some of the interesting things. Because you got to keep processing everything that's being said and look toward how do I apply it to my situation. And mm -hmm. I, I've got my list of people. Right. Uh, that and I and they and they created an injustice. I know why they created injustice. It's okay that I'm angry. Uh, what do I do with this? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the, the scripture starts to tell us. He said the first thing is, um, and if you notice, there's an interesting word there. He says, uh, the way that you act, and remember that because you're you've written the whole thing. It's talking about people that are opposing you. Because mm -hmm. uh, God said, vengeance is mine. Well, why? Well, because they crossed the line of justice. Uh, so that's what it's talking about. Okay. Right. Uh, he said, now your view of it is to treat everybody, including them, with, mm -hmm. with respect. Oh, okay. So you, you notice that and say, okay, respect. I'm supposed to be respectful. Um, you would spend some time. Uh, evaluating uh, each person, what's my viewpoint of being respectful toward them? Mm. Um, and I would I would write about that. Um, and, right. and and see, remember this is this is you and God. Your journal is yours and God's. And by the mm -hmm. way, um, if I'm doing this, I am not sharing this with Linda and say, here, read my journal. Right. It's I can completely be authentic with God. Mm -hmm. So even when I kind of know, like, eh, I'm not very respectful uh, to this person, I can write it out mm -hmm. because it's truth. See, uh, and God says, let's get to the truth of it because it's about your heart. So how do I how do I uh, interact with these people? Am I respectful? Um, and. Do I think I could be respectful if I if I process with them? And I would just write that out. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, he says uh, respectful. Okay. Then uh, he says, as far as this concerning you, be at peace with everybody. Mm hmm. Okay. So first of all, who who's it concerning? Concerning me. Me. <laughs> <laughs> so he he doesn't say if the other party does X, Y, and Z. Doesn't, right. say, doesn't say that. Remember, the Bible is about what it says, what it doesn't say. Mm -hmm. So it's not about, well, if, if, if. It just says, no, it's, if it's concerning you uh, and everything that you could do to be at peace with everybody. Okay, now, as you list these people down, are you at peace with them? No. Right. You're not. Uh, okay, so as, if it's concerning me, what would it look like for me to t attempt to be at peace with them. What would that look like? Mm. Well, a lot of that has to start simply with heart, heart searching and with God giving you peace yeah. and speaking to the situation, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, in order to, as far as it's concerning me to be at peace, I would have to invite them to process with me. Mm. Um, uh, because um, we're not at peace. Okay, right. okay, that's why I'm angry. We're not at peace. So it's not about cave to what they want. That's not what it's talking about. Right. As far as it's concerning you, do you have a heart to uh, invite them to process truth with you? 
Mm-hmm. Um, as far as just concerning you, you could be the, the in, inviter. And if you do it, you have to be able to do it with honor and respect. Mm. Now, by the way, not change your truth. It isn't right. that, that I accept what you did or I, I overlook what you did. But rather, um, I can come and talk it through with you with honor and respect uh, and, and, uh, in, a, in a positive way. Okay, so here's what you do. Um, as far as it's concerning you, um, uh, what step could I take with each party? So what you do is you, t- you go through your list, um, and you would say, uh, you'd start out with saying, can I even talk to them at the moment because they're either they're current and I know who they are and where they are? Uh, and you just, mm-hmm. you just say, could I even do that? Right. Okay, a lot of them, <laughs> you can't. Right. The answer is I can't even get to them. Why? Well, they're dead. They're gone. They're in a different city. This happened right. 14 Out of years your ago. Out circle and you can't even reach them anymore. This happened 14, wow. 14 years ago and um, uh, I can't. Um, and what you're doing is you're starting to sort the people into, into where are they? Um, mm-hmm. And can I even talk to them? Right. And, and the first list is you say, you know what? Half of these people I can't even talk to. Mm-hmm. Okay, now we have a different uh, way of resolving it with them. I can't, as far as it's concerning me, I can't even offer peace to them. Mm-hmm. A bunch of others, I could. And usually, by right. the way, the, the, the others are the ones that are current uh, and, the, and usually family. <laughs> Right, right. Because <laughs> I, unfortunately, I got to see them all the time, you know, and uh, mm-hmm. and they keep whacking me, uh, and that's why I'm I'm uh, I'm hard hearted. Uh, but you sort them between: could I talk to them and offer peace, or could I not? Uh, mm-hmm. Okay, and then uh, you separate them, uh, and we'll talk about what do we do with each of these because they're different. Um, uh, and um, uh, it said your role is to attempt uh, to then decide what to do. Uh, So with that list, now that we've sorted through these verses, and we'll come back to more of this because this is kind of the the critical piece of it all, uh, we'll pick up next time. Now that we've segmented in between, yeah, we can, no, we can't. Mm -hmm. Okay, what do we do with each of those? Um, And Mm -hmm. how do do we process that? Um, So, uh, And we're setting up the sequence to get toward resolution which is what God says, I'll resolve this for you. Who? Every single person you got. And by the Mm. way, by the way, guess what? Next week, next month, you're going to have more. It's going to be more. (laughs) Why? Well, because people are self-centered and are going to hurt you all the time. Uh, And we got to learn how to do it. So Father, we thank you for the truth of this uh, beautiful verse, uh, verses. And uh, we pray that we'll unpack it uh, step by step that Our role is to, first of all, uh, be able to be with honor and respect when we do talk to them or think about them. And then secondly is to start segmenting, can we even invite them to this because you're going to show us what to do next. And this is how we abide by making it personal. And so we thank you and praise you in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Rich, for taking us into a specific example and really walking us through this. I think this is great to kind of get in the nitty gritty of it all, right? Yeah. Um, So if you have questions from today's broadcast, send them in to us at questions at abideministries.com. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Yep. We'll see you then. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by Living Waters Abide Ministries. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.